Welcome back. Today we're going to talk briefly, as always, about blur adaptation and about the larger topic of what happens if you don't wear glasses. There's other videos on this. I'll try to remember to link some of them below. There's absolutely no benefit to you living in blur. There are unfortunately all kinds of internet advice ideas about just dumping your glasses and even without the internet kind of advice, there's people going just just stopping to wear multiple diopter glasses and just being surrounded by blur. And while your vision can improve a little bit initially with this kind of practice, long term you're not going to very easily get back to 2020 that way. It's much better to use gradual reductions. It's much better to wear what you need to see clearly with a little bit of blur challenge. And I'll explain to you why. First, my name is Jake Steiner. I used to have minus five dog to high myopia. I'm now at natural 2020. No LASIK, no Bates method, no weird internet pills. Uh, and I'm here to help you with this. Links below nmyopia.org on more of the process and how I managed to improve my eyesight and how a lot of other people have done too. So blur adaptation. The problematic thing that happens is if you don't wear glasses when you should be, when, when you have multiple diopters of minus lenses that you generally need to be wearing, your eyes have a significant negative state. If you don't wear glasses, you're in blur. Then by surrounding yourself with a blur longer term causes your visual cortex, the part of your brain that processes your visual signal to become basically used to blur. You're adopted to blur. It's just how most of your biology works at some point when something's always the standard that becomes normal. So you no longer notice blur as much as you would if you had clear vision and then suddenly didn't. And the problem with this is there are a whole host of issues that you may experience with blur adaptation. Depression is a big one of them, social anxiety, a whole lot of things that are going beyond just your, your visual experience. But also when it comes to improving your eyesight, what you want is a clear image to start with and then challenging your focus a little bit. So basically, instead of wearing a full correction, instead of wearing something that, that corrects your vision to 2020 or better, you're wearing something that corrects your vision, but only to a point where written text at your primary distance has a little bit of blur. Right? You're not surrounded by blur. There's just a, a relatively clear image, but then there's text, especially text, because text is what is, is the, the single simplest, most predictable, usable way to get the stimulus you need, is you see text at somewhere around your primary usable distance, and there's a bit of blur. And now you have the opportunity to use active focus, to challenge your focus, to clear up that little bit of blur. And that's all you want. So when people are, including me, when, when I started working on my eyesight, I've gone through a period where I did go through a phase where I severely had undercorrected my vision and it was, it was really a difficult time and I didn't know what I was doing and it didn't benefit me and it doesn't, it doesn't give you more improvement faster. The problem is if you overcorrect it, right? If you're wearing 2015 glasses, you're wearing them during gloss up, you're wearing them all the time from the time you wake up till the time you go to sleep if you take them off just because of the the eye strain that they call, cause the close-up eye strain that they cause the fact that now you have to challenge your vision for everything you will see some improvement and that's a huge fallacy with all this bait stuff and online stuff is you see a little bit of improvement now you feel encouraged you know and now you continue down this path and you do run into the dead end of you get blur adaptation, everything is just blurry and eventually you just get used to it and the improvement stops. So there's no benefit to this. And the challenge, the, the reason we do close-up glasses, because the distance for close-up, of course, the, where you want the challenge is at a closer distance than if you're outside or you're participating activities where you need more distance vision. So there's the two primary distances, the close-up one and the distance one. And for both of those, you want a little bit of blur challenge. But for example, if you're in close-up and you're wearing, and you have normally would wear minus three diopter glasses, you can't see your screen clearly at an ergonomically comfortable distance, 
right? So now, if you're going to force yourself to wear no glasses, you're you're having terrible posture. You're you're leaning forward. You're hurting your neck. You're hurting your back. You're squinting at the screen. You're doing all kinds of things that are not doing you any favors on any level. So instead of not wearing any glasses with that minus three, you'd wear, for example, like a minus one. And now that corrects you just to where you can see your computer screen clearly. There's a little bit of blur. If you move your head back just a couple of centimeters, you can now blink. You can work to clear up that blur and slowly and gradually improving your eyesight. That is functional. Otherwise, what happens is if you are completely adapted to the blur, the focus stimulus that we take advantage of now no longer happens. Because say you're wearing an under correction, say you're wearing 20, 30 outside, not while you're driving or doing anything else risky. You're taking a walk with glasses that correct you to 20, 30. Without blur adaptation, you'll see street signs, you'll see car license plates, you'll see advertisements, and you'll see a little bit of blur and the blur feels unnatural. You expect to see clearly. You don't have blur adaptation. Your brain goes, hey, that should be more clear. So without even thinking much about it, you just blink and you challenge your focus and the text clears up and you go, okay, that looks right. On the other hand, if you have blur adaptation, that no longer happens. Like your visual cortex, your, your conscious awareness, everything just goes to, yeah, yeah, that looks fine, that looks normal, because you're no longer expecting a clear image. So now you're wandering around in blur, you, you're not establishing good habits, you're not practicing good habits, you're not challenging your focus, and your vision doesn't improve. Besides the depression, social anxiety, and headaches, and all the other things that you can get from becoming adapted to blur. So a lot of times when I get students that come to me that have multiple dioptomyopia that have stopped wearing glasses, is we, we take a step back and we say, okay, let's get back to a clear image. Not 2010, right? You don't need to see the moon with your, with your glasses. You just need to get to a point where you can see clearly and you again go back to being used to seeing clearly as you're supposed to, right? We always want to start with the, the natural focal plane equivalent. Like, how clearly should you see naturally? And if that requires a minus three, then then wear a minus three, right? Wear a minus three until you're completely used to the clear image, and then maybe you step back to that minus 2.75, for example, right? I'm not an optometrist, I'm not offering you prescription advice. But then when you're ready for that little bit of a reduction, your visual cortex goes, wait a minute, things are not as clear as they used to be, and now you're challenging your eyesight. Now, if you know how to do active focus, if you have good habits already in place, whenever you're outside, whenever you're talking, taking a walk, at 20, 30, just you are instinctively challenging yourself for better vision. You're doing it without having to consciously think about it because your brain always is going, hey, this is not as clear as it should be. So there are only advantages to taking it gradually. It's just like if you start running tomorrow and you haven't been running, you don't start with a half marathon. You're not running, you're not going out practicing 10 mile runs every day. You start gradually because the stimulus happens from adding a little bit of what your body's not used to and giving your body a chance to get to that next level, right? So there's no, there's no advantage to going extremes. There's no, you don't need to be Amish tomorrow. You don't need to throw away your glasses and live in blur. So avoid the blur adaptation. If you already have some of it, don't be afraid to take a step back and say, okay, I need a little bit more correction. I need to see clearly. I need to be used to seeing clearly before I take the next step. Very simple, right? Very simple. You want to take it slowly. You want to think about how things would work naturally instead of giving in to some weird internet stuff. This, this uh, quick video, by the way, inspired from uh, one of the posts in a Facebook group. I check on the Facebook group every day. I don't respond to all messages or comments because I just can't. If you're looking for me specifically, you can find me in the Back to 2020 forum. Uh, if you don't have an invite, I don't do a whole lot of them since I only do about 10 total a month and those are given away pretty quickly. But if you need one, you can always email me and ask. That's it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and give it a face, and I'll see you in the next one.